drink some tea and then what I'd really like to start the video with is actually a thank you to all my patreon supporters uh, you guys have done a lot there's now 168 of you which is just crazy I'm still not really sure how that works but uh, I guess thank you you know each of you individually and thank you internet for making all that possible um, this is really awesome to see you know people wanting go content uh, and you know, quite honestly, I've mentioned before how I kind of think normal people, again, they don't think about Go. This is not, this is our own little community that's kind of secluded. Uh, and it's very easy to feel like you're lost and, or that what you're doing isn't valuable because society at large doesn't know about Go or doesn't, certainly doesn't play Go, uh, at least, you know, Western society that is. And, you know, it's, it's easy to feel like you're a weirdo. And so when I look at the Patreon list and see all these people supporting it, it's just like, wow, you know, no, this is, this is, this is not weird. This is awesome. And so, you know, certainly uh, the feeling I get from that is, is really, really positive. And, you know, just want to thank you guys so much for, for you know, making that uh, possible. So anyway, that all aside, uh, I want to show you a game that I got to play a little bit earlier this week. This was actually a game against a pro uh, who was visiting the Seattle Go Center. Uh, and he did a simul game. So this is technically a simul game. It's not a one-on-one -on -one game. Um, but he's two down pro. He, uh, he, he prefers the, uh, his name to be Ray when spoken in English. Um, Chang Rui Ji, I'm not really exactly sure how to say this. Uh, he was born in Taiwan, uh, but basically came up through the Japanese pro system. Uh, again, this is, uh, a little bit more rare nowadays. Um, but historically speaking throughout the 20th century, this is like a very common thing, um, for some of the best players in, uh, Korea and China to do in, uh, Cho Chikun being like a great example of that. Um, so anyway, he, this is a simul game, so he was playing on six boards. Uh, I think I was the top board. We weren't really in a specific order or anything, but I think I was. Um, and uh, so I told my rank, and he said, oh, you should take two stones. <laughs> and two stones is not very much of a handicap uh, to go against a pro player. So, you know, he he definitely wasn't intending to win and not work really hard. Um, so if that gives you an inclination of how serious he took the games or, um, you know, just how hard he wanted to work, I guess. Uh, you know, two stones is pretty, is pretty minimal handicap. Most pros, again, it's a simul, so it's tough to say, but most pros, um, can easily give me three or, you know, good pros can give me four. Um, but again, not a big deal. I'm happy just to be playing a pro because I haven't really done it in a while. Like I go to the U S go Congress and I'll obviously play a lot of pros there while I'm there and hang out with professionals. Cause you usually get, you know, 20, 25 pros in attendance. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm friends with a few other pros, you know, outside of, uh, I don't want to say the Go Congress, but I mean, like, I occasionally interact with pros, you know, like Haley and Jenny Shen. Um, so I, so I, I do get some pro experience outside of the Go Congress. Um, but this year I was thinking I really haven't. So I was really excited when, when Ray, uh, you know, came to the Seattle Go Center and I was like, oh yeah, that'd be great. I haven't, you know, tested my skills against a pro in a long time. So uh, I thought I would share this game with you guys as well. All right. So anyway, White opens up with a 4-3 and this is very common. Do you see this in handicap games? Um, it's very, you know, 4-3 Joseki's tend to be a little more complicated than 4-4 than four, four Joseki's. So if you're a stronger player, you want to make the game complicated, start in a 4-3 point. Uh, I oblige him. I like the 4-3 point. So I played my own. And just again, starting very natural, very active. And he makes this formation on the top. And again, this is a very common um, strategy when you're playing a handicap game, is to make very loose frameworks and try to get your opponent into a fight. Uh, instead of just trying, I mean, another strategy is just to play everywhere and make the board confusing from having stones everywhere. Um, but sometimes that leads to easy situations where as long as black just stays strong everywhere, um, it's hard for white to make up the handicap stone. Um, but in this case, by making very loose frameworks, at some point black's going to feel like black has to come in here and then black can gain an advantage or white can gain an advantage that way. So again, very normal. This is a little bit weird of a spacing. Again, another handicap strategy is to not play uh, the normal shapes. And normally we'd expect to see a stone at J17 instead of J16. This is the normal, uh, you know, mini Chinese formation. So again, just by, by making a very loose framework, by playing it slightly different than the normal pattern, you're making the weaker player a little bit more uncomfortable. And that's kind of what you want to do. So again, this is a very standard handicap uh, kind of idea, kind of aesthetic. 
Uh, I play this move mainly because, you know, like everyone else in the world, I've been watching the, the Michael Redman AlphaGo uh, Zero versus AlphaGo Master games on YouTube uh, through the USGA website. And you should definitely check them out if you already haven't because they're fantastic. And, you know, Michael Redman, who I initially met uh, six, seven years ago, I can't remember how many years ago, um, he's just so good. Like, like I, you know, it hurts. Like, it hurts. Um, number one, how good he is and how restrained he is too. Like, like those videos, he's, he's done a lot of work to try to pre present the information so clearly. And, uh, when I met him and when I've seen him lecture, uh, he's capable of going to like really far in depth analysis. You know, we're talking like 50 move reads, um, uh, from any given board position. And, uh, the fact that he doesn't get caught in that quagmire is really just awesome and just such good educational uh, pedagogy and value do check those games out if you don't so the michael redmond aga series anything he does is just fantastic go do it all right so yeah, I've, I've been watching those videos so i play the AlphaGo shimari formation right this little two high space approach uh corner thing uh just because i felt like it again it's what i've been experiencing along with everyone else so i wanted to play it uh and then white plays here and Again, maybe this is a very AlphaGo inspired move. It totally makes sense, right? With this two stones on the fourth line, um, black is very much emphasizing this part of the board. Um, so white immediately just reduces that. And black has several options. And uh, we'll go through those first and I'll show you which one I played. Uh, the first of which is to play here. Um, white is likely to continue something like this. Uh, if black continues this way, um, you know, white has a couple options to either just, you know, maybe basically come back and try to fix the shape. Um, white can play a shape like this. Sometimes white can even play this for a little bit looser. Uh, white can even consider tanukiing. Um, white can play here. This gets a little bit heavy um, and, and becomes a little bit of a, of a counterattack for black. So I don't think white's going to do that. Um, but I think this will be fine. Like, I think, I think, you know, this everybody gets a little bit of something what they're happy you know black makes a little more profit white gets to continue to reduce the direction that black is emphasized um so this is very very possible um for both players uh this is also very possible for both players so black plays here um white is more than likely going to jump back and if black takes this kind of shape white will play very lightly here um and then black sort of has to make a choice uh I guess black doesn't have to make a choice right now, but um, black would still like to attack, attack this on the large scale, so black would feel like he has to play here. The problem, um, the reason why I sort of rejected this line um, is not because it's bad, because I think it's still, like, this is still good for black. Um, but it just feels like in a handicap game, this stone still has a lot, a lot of flexible options. These stones are very flexible, and black's shape is already kind of over-concentrated. And, you know, for me playing as a stronger player, uh, you know, I really don't, like there's a lot of flexible, flexible choices that that player gets to make or I have to make in dealing with these situations. And so even though black has an advantage right now, um, you know, it's just that, it's that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at opportunities and going, eh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to proceed from here. <laughs> so if I don't get a good result from this, I'm just left with a clump of stones that really aren't getting much points. Because it's really not hard to imagine, right? If white comes in here and I back off and white comes here, all of a sudden this top looks big, my area looks very small. I mean, black can play here is the next shape point technically. Um, but again, white doesn't mind. White will just continue to reduce and expand this area. So, I don't know. I didn't really like that either. And so in the game, what I did was neither and just ignored. And I, <laughs> I'm not convinced this is correct <laughs> at all. Um, but it was, this is one of those things where I, where I just didn't want to be pushed around and, and I know ironically, I'm letting myself be pushed around because I'm giving white the initiative here to play additional moves. Um, yeah, I just, I just did not want to follow white around the board. That was just a mindset. And so I just found another move and I don't think it's right. <laughs> I think I should have played one of the other two variations um, that would be expected. Um, but hey, go is supposed to be fun, right? And this was my fun move. Uh, so white, of course, tries to play the most severely he can. And I just push up and I play very simply here. I just cower in the corner. White perfects his shape. And now white has a very large outside. And 
you know, the nice thing about this way uh, is that black still has sente, right? So black, you know, takes these points, and they're not completely solid, but, you know, it's looking like black can probably count a good 15 points there almost. Maybe we'll say 10, 10 to 15. Um, this white wall uh, is facing the black influence stones, and black has the next move. So, like, if black has initiative here, this is going to be really good for black. Um, I kind of think if I was white, even though this move looks so good, I was expecting a move more like around here or here, just depending on how far white wanted to press his luck. Um, I really didn't expect white to actually perfect the shape, even though it looks so good. Uh, it just feels slow um, because it's not, it's not quite the correct direction with the sides that we've emphasized now with this wall and this wall. Um, but you can understand why, because again, a move through here um, would now allow this group to be invaded or separated, and now there's a lot of pressure on the top. White will not be able to make points here easily. Uh, so uh, my next move, you know, I'm, I've already decided, right, if this is the sequence, um, I have to play some over here. The question is how far away from my influence and how close to White's. And once I, like, like when I was thinking about the situation, like back here, um, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll find a point. But then when I was, once I got to this point, it became much more difficult. Uh, and I'll show you, I'll show you some reasons why. Number one, uh, let's say I take this immediate shape point. This makes white actually really happy. Um, I mean, not super happy, but the happy in the sense that again, it's a handicap game and all of a sudden black is played near white's thickness. That's great for white because now there's gonna be complications. There's gonna be a lot of reading and uh, white can counterattack something. Um, probably starting with this move would be the next move. And if black jumps, again, white has a very simple connection here. Um, black can do other fancy things, but again, this gets complicated uh, and not at all easy to see how this is going to end up. Um, basically, black just ends up getting attacked or into some sort of big fight. So like even, even trying to prevent a connection with this move is not good. Um, <clears throat> so I really don't want to give white that opportunity. Uh, here, I kind of felt like this is the same, except it's missing the shape point, right? The three stones, the shape point is here. Um, so white will still have the option to make an eye in here later if I play a little bit further off. And furthermore, white's still probably going to attack me and I'll still probably end up with some sort of fight situation. So I didn't play there, so I was too scared to play there. Uh, I could play a move like here. And I think this would be okay. Um, again, it's nice direction. It's starting to make a base. It's playing off of these two stones. Um, the only problem is that it feels like white will be able to expand naturally, the center influence. And, you know, in a, in a handicap game, I really don't want to give my opponent like a huge center influence because that just means I'm going to be uh, harassed <laughs> for the rest of the game. Everything's going to get invaded and harassed if my opponent owns the center. So I just didn't feel like playing third line. Uh, especially with emphasizing, you know, center, center, center with these three stones. It didn't feel right. So the move I came up with was here. And, you know, it still doesn't, it still allows white the shape point, right? It's not really harassing white too severely. Um, later on, I'm trying to aim at this cut, of course. Um, but, you know, at the time, it really doesn't seem like this cut does much. It seems like white will still be able to make shape. Um, Black really needs about two moves over here to threaten these stones effectively. Um, and, you know, in order to get two moves, these stones had to feel pressure. Like, it, it's, like this is a possibility, but without any other black stones, all I'm, all I'm seeing is that black, white will be able to handle both this side and this side and be okay, and I'll just have a group floating. So this stone doesn't directly aim at this cut yet. Um, it, it's, it's like a preparation for a preparation, which is a terrible thing to do in Go usually. Um, but again, I was okay with it because... Uh, it anchors this right formation a little bit. It starts to, um, you know, look like this could turn into a lot of points. It also works with this stone and this stone, right? And black is really emphasizing this whole bottom area with a move like this. So it's a weird point, though. It's just a really weird space. And, you know, in this game, I think I was just really... Like, I hadn't played a really strong Go player in a while. And so I just really came to this game with a sense of, like, creativity. of Like, let's just try things. Um... Partially just because, again, in my, my classes and my teaching, I've been playing a lot of Q players. And, you know, they let you get away with a lot of stuff. And so um, I still have this mentality of let's try some things and see if I can get away with stuff. 
And in this game, I, I did later. I'll, I'll, I'll show you a really cool move that he, he told me he missed after the game uh, was over. That shouldn't I shouldn't be as proud of as I am, but we'll get to that. Okay, uh, so this is very natural. Black is really developing this bottom area very quickly. Uh, so white just comes into the obvious approach point. Black has a lot of options here, um, including we could actually kick this stone and just harass from the outside and just collapse it. Um, we can just build off of this towards this stone. Uh, we can play any variety of pincers. In fact, in the game, I played this one. Uh, and then white plays here, which I was a little bit... Um, I was not... I was really... I should have expected, but I wasn't at the time. So this move caught me a little bit off guard. Um, it feels like white needs to do something to break up the bottom. And... Maybe maybe this does it. Probably this move is probably does it better than this move, at least in terms of making complications. Even though this move is the, the quote unquote stronger move, the best local result. Um, with a move like this, it's it throws into a little more confusion. And I was still in my little experimental phase, so instead of playing this sort of you know quasi Joseki here, um, which I didn't really like this result, right? If white if white plays this cut and I play this way. Um, you know, I should like this result, but I don't. <laughs> um, I don't know why I don't. There is this, if white connects here, black has this move to seal in. Um, like, I, like, black, like, I should be happy with this. Like, it looks like I lost a huge corner. Um, but I only had one stone in the corner, so it really wasn't mine. Um, the white corner shape is actually not perfected. White still needs to add moves here in order to, to make this into any number of large number of points. Um, but anyway, I preserved the direction. Like, look at this bottom. I now have a wall here um, facing this very ambitious formation. So what, black is still in complete command of the bottom. I don't know why I looked at this and I went, ah, it just feels ugly. Um, yeah, just don't know. Maybe, maybe I should be more scared of a variation like this. But uh, is this a thing? I don't know what the best move is here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I did look at actually I remember I did look at this variation when I was playing and um I don't I'm not sure what the best shape move is. They all kinda half work. Maybe just there. They have this problem. But uh I guess that is that is not not a not a win for black. Okay, so that's a problem. <laughs> Maybe that move doesn't work play this, but then you get to this thing. Um, you can play here. I think we just take this and this. No, the black still, still still wins this one. Yeah, I, I don't think I should have been scared of this. I, I, I was feeling creative. So sad. Don't be creative, kids. All right, so in the game, this is this is the natural move, right? This is the move that you should expect and um, want to play, right? Just keep this two stone split, um, get your corner group out, possibly even link up to this stone. And again, if white plays normal Josekis, black will get a pretty huge wall here. So in game though, I kind of wanted that same result, but more directly. So I played here. And again, this is partially symptomatic of watching all these AlphaGo games. Because um, AlphaGo, in a lot of the games, ends up playing this point in this attachment. Um, again, AlphaGo, when AlphaGo is playing it, it's not in this specific situation, <laughs> necessarily. But it just seems to be like a point that AlphaGo plays in a lot of games. So, you know, I tried it. And I already had a pretty good idea what was going to happen here. And, it, and it's, I think it's pretty inferior to just attaching the normal variations you'd expect to attach here. Um, but we play a pretty expected sequence. White Hanes, I pull back, uh, white makes shape, and I just come on, come on top and build this wall thing directly. Now, one problem with this, it's a huge problem, is that this stone gets injured. Like, I'm kind of using this stone in the sense that white can't really tanuki, white can't really play away, because um, the threat of this stone surrounding this group is too real. But, um, you know, all this is expected. Uh, you can just see how this stone is getting swallowed up in this white moyo. And all of a sudden, this whole black area is actually immediately rivaled by the size of the white area. 
And so, and it's all because basically black lost up stone here. Um, and the stone's not dead, I know, and you'll, well, it'll, it'll get played out a lot later. Um, but the idea is that, you know, white also has a stone that's not completely dead um, and a corner invasion. So, you know, maybe this is, this kind of looks even, you know, of a result. So for a two stone handicap game, at least right now, like visually, it doesn't feel like black still has his two stones. It kind of feels more like an even game. Uh, white makes this shape, which um, I was a little bit surprised about, but I, I really like. And the reason why I like it is if we look at the other potential shapes, is that if, if white just extends and is really ambitious, uh, this cut is really hard for white to deal with later on. Like right now, white, you know, can either just push his way and, and take territory. Um, even then, that's still not really easy, actually, for white to to deal with, because black can come this way, black can eat these stones, yeah. So this cut is just really obnoxious. Um, furthermore, even if black doesn't want to cut, um, black can certainly almost get a free move here any time, and then make a base or some formation. Um, so white doesn't want to give um, black that freedom. White also doesn't really want to give um, or play a really slow move like this, because uh, black will probably exchange it for a move like this, and white still feels like he's being surrounded, so he still need another move over here. And maybe that's enough time for black to seal, not seal, but um, expand on a really large scale. Um, so this just feels slow tempo. And now normally, if we play here, and again, this is the normal situation, black will take this Atari, and black, white has to play here anyway. So it seems like um, white should just play here, right? This is the this is the point that your black is going to force you to play no matter what. But in this case, this exchange is good for white. Like black black would never hane here for this move. Um, it's just too helpful for white, right? Black would either come here or help this stone. And so because of that, um, white plays this connection first because he doesn't mind making this exchange. Like that's a good exchange for white. This is a very like hard thing for new Go players to understand, right? Like when you're trying to connect your stones, like which shape is most efficient, uh, and a lot of this can be done through Tawari analysis. That's the the Japanese term for where you exchange the order of the moves, and then you look at the resulting shapes, right? So like this sequence, if white has a stone here, black's never going to play a stone here, um, and that's why white plays here first. And so when black plays here this exchange is good for white, even though white ends up playing the other point. Now, one problem with white playing here is that black could choose to peep this way. But, and now, and now, right, this stone looks kind of dumb, empty triangle shape, but now black's a lot heavier. And uh, again, this, this extra stone here doesn't really help black shape very much. So white's, again, white's okay with both of this, and that's why he doesn't make the solid connection. And the defects it leaves is why he doesn't make this connection. Uh, we also don't want to make this connection <laughs> uh, because this is like the previous example, except instead of a stone here, which is useful, putting a stone here, which is not nearly as useful. Okay, so there's your, there's like your quick and dirty Tawari analysis uh, of you know how to connect these stones. Um, so this move again, I I was I was initially thinking White would have to choose between here and here, but in the game he chose here, and that was a nice little surprise. Went oh yeah, and I figured it out. Uh, I take the Atari immediately. There's not really a reason not to. Like I said, this move isn't that useful for black. Um, so you might as well take the one that could be useful later on if black gets to connect here. Um, this feels really good. Um, it's almost sente. Like if white does something here, um, black can play very strongly and basically reduce all of the garbage. <laughs> not the garbage, but the, the white potential very quickly with some very strong moves. Um, so we did that. But at this moment, I took time to help out this stone, because it's definitely behind enemy lines. Um, the stone is useful because it can kind of connect up with this one, uh, and it also is actually threatening to um, double approach the corner. So um, I thought it, I, at the time I thought it was a good move. Um, at this point, I kind of feel like, you know, I... Hmm, maybe that's too greedy. I don't know. I still don't know. Feels necessary, though. Like, just letting white have this whole left-hand side is way too much. Um, but white chooses to start a fight now. And so we're going to leave these two stones for much, much later. Much later. 
Um, white comes out and immediately threatens to capture two stones and break through, so black plays the obvious shape move. And now uh, white will set this stone into motion. And this looks really dangerous for black because look at this group of five black stones uh, and how it has no friends. And it's technically now surrounded on both sides by white. So in the corner, again, if black were just to retreat in the corner, um, isn't even that solid yet? Uh, like, maybe I guess that's two eyes that way, but... <laughs> uh, can white play another move here first? Oops, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, this is, this is still very dangerous for black, um, because this eye can be falsified here. So black really needs another move. And then if, if you know, if the timing is good, again, I'm not saying the timing is, because white really needs another move here. <laughs> Um, but white will be able to get another move on the outside here and live inside of this giant black formation. Uh, so in this case, uh, black has two good options here with how to deal with the stone. Again, it's kind of a shape thing. Uh, the first of which is to Hane. And I haven't looked at too many variations after the game. During the game, I, th I decided not to. And the reason not to was um, white's move, white still needs to come back and play here. And now all of a sudden my defect looks more exposed, right? You can still see that this hole here needs to be defended somehow. And furthermore, the second reason is if I play here, which I did in the game, um, I, I still have this cut, right? Like, so if, if white tries to do anything too fancy, I can always try to come back here and uh, fight like this. So I think pulling back is, is I think it's the better move. <laughs> um, this, but I guess I guess the nice thing about this move is if I'm going to just try to make life in the corner and then build a wall here and just let this group live, um, this is probably the better move to do it. Even though it looks more severe, this is more of like the exchange kind of variation. This is a little bit more hard-nosed. We're just going to say, okay, no one's going to have easy life. Uh, White, of course, pulls back. And you can see the difference, right? Having a stone at J4 versus J3. Right now, these two stones are okay. Um, with a stone at J4, White would be able to cut. Uh, so I make this exchange, again, to try to make the corner something. And white pushes. Again, black has a choice. Black could come up here. Um, this would, of course, give white more forcing moves. Um, and it also weakens this connection. Right now, um, black can connect here. It's a little bit awkward. I'm oh, sorry. It's a little bit awkward because white can get this move in and this move in um, and sort of get to the outside this way. But there is a connection. I want to preserve the connection, so I just pull back again. Now when I go to connect, white doesn't get all that free stuff on the outside. White plays a shape move to continue getting out, and so now I come back and connect this way. And again, there's no white way for white to separate this. I mean, white can get some moves over here, but all of these black stones are now safe, and white is very much floating. So white plays here. Let's try to get some shape. And now during the game, I thought this was a really bad move. Like, I thought this was an overplay. And actually, and so, so in, on my board, we have a group of spectators, like a small group of, you know, people I know. And, um, you know, we're sort of just openly talking about the, or I'm talking about the game and they're mostly listening or laughing and we're having a good time, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But, you know, he plays this move and he walks away and I said, he just overplayed. You know, I just turned to the group and said, that's an overplay. Uh, and, you know, in Go, everything's flexible. My stones are strong here. Um, and my stones are weak here, so, you know, as long as I keep these stones stronger, um, certainly this does feel like an overplay. Um, but the thing is, is that, yeah, even though, you know, these, these stones can, um, can get stronger, this, this stone does weaken them quite a bit, right? This, this is their natural way to continue to, to their friendship stones. And so having a stone here is really useful. Anyway, the reason why I immediately thought it was an overplay is because of this point. <laughs> Like, this is just a good point uh, in the middle of white's shape. Uh, it's threatening to cut through here now. Uh, it's, it has a future eye on perhaps this cut um, through this point. Uh, it actually helps, again, with this shape a little bit, just by giving it more liberties. Um, and so white plays here. I almost immediately play here and, and just have a big smile on my face. I'm just going, look, look at your shape. It's terrible. Because obviously right now, um, white would really like to cut here with one of these moves, but there is no way to make that work. 
uh, or with this one, right? Same thing, no way to make that work. And so this, this move was felt so, such a happy move. Um, and, and, I, and you know, White came back over after a couple minutes of playing the other boards for a while, and he played a move, and, and we all just kind of laughed, which was here. <laughs> uh, so and this, is, this, is, this is like the move White needs to play, right? There isn't really a good move for White. These three stones are really, or two stones before he plays this one, are really important because, again, White needs to be able to attack this in order to have a game. You see all this White influence in the center? If this black group gets strong, all that influence is worth nothing. And all of a sudden, these points in the corner, and these points in the corner, and this potential points in the corner are more than enough to win the game. So I place here, we have a laugh, uh, and I make shape this way. And so now all of a sudden these cuts just don't work, right, after this stone. Um, again, white can harass them a little bit, you know, maybe get some compensation on this side, but the important group here is strong. And so after this move, I was feeling pretty good. I was feeling pretty good. Uh, I was actually feeling good enough to the point where I was like, I'm going to win this game. Yeah, like I'm gonna beat I'm gonna beat a pro in a two stone game here. Uh, the next two moves are I think two of my proudest moves of the game, and and partially just because the peanut gallery that was watching this game, um, some of you guys know Dan from other videos on my channel. He was watching this game, and and he couldn't believe the move I did, and he was he was telling me it was the wrong move. We were making banana jokes. We, we were we, at this point in the game we were talking about bananas. Um, everything in this game was bananas. Um, like here, I'll, I, I can I can try to uh, imitate some of some of the commentary. Oops, that's not the game. <laughs> yes, this move white plays here, and so black has a couple choices um, to defend this side. And again, if black just plays here, you know the joke was, look at all the bananas. That's a lot of bananas, right? If when black just plays here, you know white can't really do anything about all these points now. They've all just become territory. Uh, and that's, you know, that's 30, 40, almost 45 points maybe on that side. That's a lot of points on a single side of the board. If you, you know, if you go from this corner to this corner. Uh, so that's a lot of bananas. Um, my move, which I still think is absolutely the better move and, and far superior to whatever my <laughs> onlookers wanted me to play, uh, is here. And just give up these bananas. These bananas are not important. This is, this is kind of the key point now. Again, we have two weak groups. They're both trying to get to friends uh, or find eye space. And for me to just make some bananas right now gives white so much initiative on this white black group. It's, it's just not, like there's just no comparison. All of a sudden, uh, black is the one who is being chased and all of these points don't matter, right? If white gets a 50 point middle, so. So I played here, and this is again one of the one of the moves I was most proud of um, in the game. Uh, it's not entirely unexpected, though, right? Again, you play you play two stones in the corner like this when you really you play this when you were like mentally not committed to the corner, right? If you were if you were committed to territory down here, you'd play like a more conservative shamari. Um, but I think something that's really good for my own mental state of playing Go is when I make these really large formations. Like it reminds me not to be committed to the corner. So that's like a little psychological benefit, I guess, of playing these like just really high floaty moves. Reminds you that Go is really not a game about territory until the end. <laughs> okay, so I played this move and I thought this move was great. And I can tell the pro didn't like it because then he started to pay more attention to my game <laughs> for a little while. Uh, um, so he plays this and uh, of course I just pull back. Again, I don't, I don't want to do anything that will give him free moves or let him make shape. And again, this move is really nice because, again, that's a lot of bananas, right? That's just bananas. Like, just White's just giving me points. Um, he does need to make this exchange, though, because his next move uh, is similar. It's actually very similar to the L8 move and what it's trying to do. Again, he's trying to harass that middle group at the maximum distance possible. And so <clears throat> at this point in the game, uh, I, think, I think this is the first point where I, you know, he's, he's kind of going around the room and he's spending more time on other boards than mine for most of the, up, up, up until the last few moves. But this is the first point where he comes back around before I actually, you know, have my move on the board. Um, so I actually take my time here to, to really think about this. Um, and the move I end up playing is here. And the sequence I kind of want slash expect, 
uh, is this co type of shape, right? If this happens, um, this this looks real. I mean, it's dangerous for everyone. Like this is just really dangerous for everyone. But it looks like white has a really hard time dealing with this. Um, like white getting a panuki here or a filled panuki here is kind of useless. Like it, yeah, it kind of defends this cut. But again, that cut hasn't really been a worry for a long time. Um, and on the inside, all of a sudden, black has uh, surrounded this entire white group inside of that giant um, black space. So white really can't allow for this. And furthermore, whoops, ah, don't close. <laughs> um, if white, you know, just tries to make shape here or, or find free stuff, um, if black is allowed to fill in this co um, and or connect up to this group, and white is just too busy trying to make eyes. Um, this is this is just a disaster, right? Because now all of a sudden white can't make a lot of points here. Um, in theory, uh, black will have time to come back and make this live. This white top is very thin, like it's not territory at all, and white doesn't really have any cash. And again, there's already a bunch of bananas over here, there's some bananas over here, and there's some bananas over here. So in the game, whoops, uh, white does Hane this side, which is the correct side. If you ha if white honey the other side, this would have been a disaster, I think, because <laughs> now your options are much fewer. Um, in fact, uh, I think black can even play this way to simplify the game. Mm, maybe not. I assumed black could play this way to simplify the game. Uh, I thought there would be a counter cut here. Maybe not. Okay, well, not worry about that. <laughs> anyway, this side, you know, cut on the side you don't want is the go proverb, and I think applies here. Um, cause, yeah, um, I do cut immediately, again, I'm still sort of half expecting to go into this sort of quasi-co variation, uh, but then white just pulls back. And white is staking the entire game now on being able to make two eyes for this group, or attack these two stones, now they've been cut. Alright, this move, this move I don't know, I think is wrong. Uh, it feels like it's trying to be too efficient. And the real reason why it's wrong is because this formation is bad. Um, this is this is not in this shape. This is not a good place for this stone um, because there's still this cut here. And if you cut this way, this is a problem. Um, maybe not immediately right now, but the second white has anything else, this is a problem. Um, so if white were to play here, black would have to back off. Um, and then white has a choice, depending on how white feels about the strength of the outside, white could double Hane, or white could just get more free stuff and then come out. And I'm going to expect that black doesn't really have a whole lot of time here to to make these this group live. Okay, so this is the problem with this shape. And so in the game, I kind of think I should play here. Um, of course, the thing I have to be now worried about is this move. And maybe, I think I was too worried about it, because I still kind of think there is actually a connection um, over here. I just have to work a little bit harder to find it. Uh, is this crosscut good? Uh, do, 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 do. I didn't actually look at this earlier. I think this crosscut is good. Yeah. Because now there's this, wow, misclick. Or something like this. This is very, very crude reading, and I'm sure... Um, the YouTube commenters here are going to find some flaws in it. Um, then white just plays here and is alive. Um, but black can play here then, also make this alive. So if everybody lives, again, black has the bananas. Black is holding all the bananas. Okay, so anyway, I think I should have played here and just um, spent some more time reading what happens with this move. Uh, or maybe, I'm not sure what else White would try, maybe this move. And so that's on me. I think I think this move is a problem. Uh, so White plays here. And again, after White plays here, now this cut again looks real severe, right? Like, uh, real difficult for Black to deal with. Um, but I'd already sort of made up my mind if White cuts, I'm just going to push on the outside as much as I can. Um, it's more important I, I get connected here. And I thought this move might be useful if, if white does cut. Um, white might have a liberty problem here. Um, which, 
maybe it was all in my head. <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks like it was all, all in my head, actually. <laughs> yeah, this is this is no good. This is very bad. Very, very bad. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I, this is this is too hard <laughs> um, for black, right? There's nothing here. Oh, uh, is there any? Wait, can we play this net? Oh no! If wife white doesn't short the net, there's this problem. Mm, is it a real problem? Not a real problem. Still Atari. Okay. Uh, so maybe this net just works. I mean, it feels like White missed an opportunity here, and I kind of baited him because this is this is actually kind of bad shape. <laughs> um, like this is really ambitious, right? Like Black would really like later on to be able to play another move here, <laughs> and just make a lot of bananas, fifth line bananas. Uh, and you know, White takes all this, and then just comes back here instead of pushing and cutting. I feel like that was very very soft play. Like this is very much like White just. You know, solidifying the area, not asking for very much, and being happy with what he has. Where I think this Hane, this Hane feels pretty, pretty nice for white. Very difficult for black. So I think that's the pro's mistake. But again, it's a simul game, and um, yeah. So after here, um, white makes shape. Uh, oh yeah, the timing of this peep. I'm actually, I'm not, I put this in the, into a game record um, well after we played the game, you know, like uh, a day later. And I don't quite remember the timing of this peep, but it was somewhere in the sequence Black found time. So forgive me if this move is like a move or two too early. Um, but White connects, it's a big move. And then Black makes shape. All right, so right now this Black group, not 100% unconditionally alive, but it looks like it's got some pretty big eye potential. Um, the White shape is all, is almost perfect life um black can condense it down to just a few points but very hard to fill to kill the rest of the way um and white plays this move which is not unexpected again remember how white didn't mind making this exchange it's because it still leaves us cut here like it and in fact it leaves more than a cut there because black was never able to extend there um and again if white is able to uh capture this stone, everything on the top left becomes very white looking. Um, so I connect once, white captures, and I immediately try to make a base. And <clears throat> if we look, if we assume, and this is a big assumption, that everything in the middle is alive, uh, black is feeling pretty good. Uh, if we look at raw territory, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I'm counting in threes right now. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, we're looking at somewhere in the 60s for black as far as territory. Um, and with white, uh, two, three, four, I'm counting in twos. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23, 24. Even if we give white the entire top, this brick of white stones, white is only looking at like 50 points. And so at this point, like I'm, I'm feeling good. Like I'm just, I, I, I got one job. I have to not die in the middle. If I can not die in the middle, we're good. We got this. And also black, you know, even though white can come down here, I'm not counting any of these points as black already. So black can even expand, oops, or perfect, right? This bottom ter territory very quickly and easily to move something like this for even more points. Uh, so it's up to white now. The entire game rests on, on how white attacks this group and needs to get profit. That's not the game. Uh, white starts with here, which, um, you know, is a little, is a little weird. <laughs> um, but it's, this is an eye point, right? If, if white doesn't have this move, let's say white backs off, um, you can see how easily that turns into an eye. And that's a problem too, because again, there's still some shape gooiness in here, um, especially with the Liberty gone on these three stones. So uh, white starts there 
and I start there. So now, if I again, if I just connect here, this can I can be falsified, so it's not very interesting. Um, but this move makes an I pretty directly and uh, threatens to again um, basically take away the points that White earned in here, or maybe even activate um, this cut or this peep. You know, it's, it gives White a lot of shape problems. So White responds, and then I play this shape move, and this shape is actually really important. Um, it's a really important point. If white were to get it, uh, whoops, let's give white this point, black does something, white comes here. Um, later on, right, if black, let's say black just plays a natural move, white can now push here. And black actually has a lot of trouble responding here, because if we do this, this is double Atari. And if black plays here, there's this cut. And because white is now somewhat stronger here, because this Panuki, um, this black group gets really weak. Actually, it's white's not as strong as Panuki. White's also stronger because black hasn't connected these two stones yet. These two groups become separated inside of the white influence. So I really didn't like this result. So I felt like this shape was really important. The other thing this shape does is, yes, it threatens to actually push through here or push through here. It's It activates a bunch of things. So not only is it a good shape point for me, it is very forward thinking in terms of other things I'm going to harass. Um, white plays this move, which is really nice. It is really big end game and it starts to make a base for this stone, this group of stones. So even if white gets cut off here, white sort of has a little bit of an emergency valve here by being able to make two eyes after this move. Um, but still, right, all we need, again, eye on the prize, what black needs to win this game is to keep this group strong and not die. If we do that, we win. Uh, of course, I didn't do that. <laughs> so I go look at the top area and go, you know what, I bet I can live there right now. And I think this group is strong enough to live on its own. I still have some some Aji over here to work with. Uh, there's still, you know, there's definitely an eye there. Um, it looks like I'll be okay. So we play this very, it's pretty crude sequence, this life sequence. After the game, he said he thought this was terrible for Black, and Black should never have attempted this because it gave him a chance. Um, I mean, Black's alive, right? This is it's a very simple, crude, you know, life sequence. Black can't be killed. Um, it's also a really good endgame for Black, too, because later on, Black has this clamp, so Black doesn't even... White doesn't even have a claim to the corner points that it looks like he has. Um, and so all White has is just thickness. Like, there, are, there's almost no white points on this board. So the time, it looked okay. And again, the peanut gallery who's watching this game, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of looking... They're just, they're just... Everyone's just looking at this group, going, how... What is going to happen to this group? Like, what is... This is, this is madness. And White starts the attack here. And after the game, White White actually had remorse. He thought he should have played here. Um, which, after you see the next couple moves, you might understand why. So White plays here, and this kind of feels me I, um, with this point and this point. And I'll show you. Oh, actually, I make an exchange first, and then play here. Because it looks like White Black is getting eyes pretty quickly. Um, it's actually not. Unless you so 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 there you know when White was reading this again it's a simul game he's reading it very quickly it still looks like it's only one eye to White and so he peeps at this right he's sort of expecting um, something like this right to get it down to one eye and in this case Black looks pretty dead that's the variation that White is expecting however I find a move I find a really good move. Like, he didn't see it, and it's a move like he, a pro should see, right? This is not this is not that hard of a move, but it's definitely, um, you know, it, it it it's it's a good enough move to win the game. I'm not saying if I won the game yet or not. That's not that's not what I was implying. Is here, and the reason why this is such a good move is number one, it's threatening to make another eye here when Black plays at this point. And it's threatening to make a bent four shape, which, if you know anything about ghost shapes, is alive. And so white uh, takes the two stones, because that, that actually pokes out the eye. So white can do that in sente. I connect here. Black, white just reduces. And then, oops. And there's nothing else white can do. Right? White can collapse even more, but there's your bent four shape. Later on, white can also capture these two stones for even more profit. So this little group that I was that was coming under attack is now between these captures and these captures. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's worth like twenty points. <laughs> but still, black doesn't have or white doesn't have very much territory. So twenty points is still nothing. 
Like it's still not enough to win. Um, you might be asking why, what happens if white um, peeps here first? Uh, so again, not a problem. Black just plays here. Is it a problem? Yeah, that is a problem. Never mind, I lied. Uh, black plays here. I worked this out in game. <laughs> yeah, black plays here. Uh, maybe that's not good enough. No, oh, it is good enough. There you go. Uh, so, is this a move? No, not a move. Yeah, this is really hard. This is really resilient. Really resilient. But you need to find this move, which again is hard. Sorry, white takes the profit and then comes over here to harass this group. And <clears throat> at this point, I'm going, okay, I've won this game. I've won this game. I've won this game. I've won this game. This is what's going through my head over and over and over again. I just have to not die. Just don't die and you win the game. Don't die, you win the game. Don't die, you win the game. So I'm just sort of responding to everything white does here. Uh, white plays over here. And this this one started to hurt. After, this, after he gets this reduction move, I was going, oh yeah, uh, maybe I do need some points. I was still, I was like, don't die, don't die, you're still in the game. Don't die, you're still in the game. Don't die, you're still in the game. We play this very simple, this is the super defensive unambitious connection. Ideally, black would like to play here. Um, but again, I'm I'm very preoccupied. Don't die, you are you can win the game. If you don't die, you can win the game. And then black plays this move. Or not, well, black white plays this move. And obviously, it feels like black should just play here. And, you know, white will either come here or pull back. And it just looks like good end game, right? Something, you know, even white plays there. This is, just, this is just a nice little chunk of territory that white came up with. Uh, basically cancels out the corner. Um, so if, <clears throat> you know, white has this much canceling out this much, and then this much maybe canceling out most of this, uh, all of a sudden, you know, maybe this and this cancel out this. Um, there's not points here in the corner yet, but whatever white can get here now, which is probably like five or six points, might is, is probably enough for white to win the game, right? Uh, maybe not after this capture. Eh, maybe. Not sure yet, depending on who gets this move. Um, but it's it's starting to get a little scary now, because I'm because all of a sudden, like I feel like my point lead had gone uh, to nothing. And so I spent a long time looking at this and going, you know what? I think this move's an overplay. <laughs> so I play here. And uh, he cuts immediately, and I play this to try to take the entire whoops, corner. And this, this to my eye, looks like it works, right? It looks like, you know, if, if white were just to come down here, obviously this is just a, a one capturing race for, um, for black. Um, but there are, there are some trickier variations, like here and here. And even to this point, though, I was, I, you know, my reading, I was like, you know, this doesn't, this doesn't work for, um, for white yet. Uh, there's five liberties for black, effectively. Well, maybe four. Four liberties for, for black and only three for white. So in my head, I was going, you know, this, this still looks like an overplay. Um... Later on, we looked at this after the game, and he actually thought it could be turned into a Seki. But I'm still a little bit confused as to how. <laughs> I don't quite remember how he showed me. Yeah. How is it Seki? Oh, like this? I think it's like this. I don't know. Wait, that's the... Is that good? Is that the order? I think that's the order. Um... See here? No. Mm, oh man, I don't remember the order. Uh, it's not sucky at all. It's still, it's still dead. Huh. All right, maybe he lied to me after the game. Well, at the time when I was playing this, uh, the the ghost center director he would come over. He had he had sort of taken over part of the peanut gallery. I looked at him. I said. Brian, you're about to learn how you punish a pro who overplays on you. I got really cocky after this move. Because <laughs> so I was looking at this, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything um, during the game. And then, if, obviously, if, if this whole corner turns black, that's a lot of bananas, because then there's no bananas here for white. 
And we're back to a banana weighing contest where white doesn't have enough. So yeah, very, very difficult spot for white here. Um, but he tanukis. <laughs> he either leaves it for later or gives up. I'm not sure which. Ah, uh, yeah, this move. This move. So this move hurts a little bit. It hurts a lot. The reason why, of course, white can play such a violent move here is because I'm surrounded by nothing but white stones. There's just, there's just strong white stones basically everywhere. And so white is playing for maximum um, shrinkage, I guess, of the black group. And if black can, you know, if, if white can shrink black into nothing, then that's, uh, you know, maybe, maybe white can get more advantage or kill it or something. So, I mean, this stone's real, is just a nuisance. Black really only has two options. Uh, black can play here. And when I first looked at the shape, I was just grotesque, gro grossed out by this empty triangle and this white peep um, sort of reducing me to one eye immediately. Um, I really didn't want to have anything to do with the shape. I was like, you know, that's, 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 I was just so turned off by the shape that I played here. Um, however, it turns out this shape is better. I would actually have a much easier time, I think, dealing with everything if I played here. Um, and after the game, Ray showed me um, Black should probably play something like this and probably take this Atari. Um, uh, I forgot, he had a, he found a timing to play this move as well. Uh, maybe it was right now. I can't remember if this Atari first or this move came first, but um, basically Black can lean and play here and then take this Atari, and that would be tremendously helpful in securing life. Um, if White connects, that's just a good move, because um, there's nothing for these, this White stone to run to. Um, white can try to connect this way, but the problem, uh, I think, happens, is it when Black plays here or here? I think black plays here. Um, if white comes up, black has this move. And white is exactly basically one liberty short. Being able to get that group out. Um, if white connects this way, um, white can't peep out this, poke out this eye. Uh, and still actually owes a move here anyway. So just something like that and like that. And that's a live black group, so that would have worked. Um, so anyway, that's that's how black should play. In the game, again, I played here. This just looked like better shape, and I, and it was one of the things like I'm reading this over and over again. I'm like, you know, I don't think I quite have two eyes, but ah uh, man, maybe maybe I'll find it once I start playing it. That's a terrible way to play go. So white immediately pokes, and then plays here. And the move I came up with, I thought was a really good move, was a really nice move, is to cut immediately. And this creates actually a little bit of a problem for white. I think there's only one move white can play here to prevent black from living cleanly. Uh, and the move that white has to play is this pullback. I think that's the only move. Um, just to give you some examples, again, if, black, if white tries to push through here, it doesn't really matter because that's just alive. If white uh, wants to take this Atari first, um, black takes Atari and um, can't connect for the same reasons. <laughs> can't do anything for the same reasons. White still needs to play over here. And that's a snapback. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see what else would be a white choice. If white takes an Atari like this, um, there is uh, this move. Is this the right move? I think so. And so... At this point, is this right? I can't remember if I read out this move. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of interesting moves, and <laughs> I read out sequences for, they work for black for most of them, except the one I couldn't read out that worked up, which is this, the obvious one, just pulling back. But it looks like it almost works. Is that not what I played? What did I play? Oh, I played this exchange first, yeah. Okay. Uh, make this exchange. Um... Yeah, I really wish I made this exchange earlier, right? This stone, if I can exchange that for that, that would have been a little bit useful. Actually, not that useful. All right. Anyway, we didn't make that exchange, but I take this Atari. And this Atari looks like it's something. Um, because now, when white pushes through here, um, black's going to play this way. And all of a sudden, that's, this move threatens to make two eyes immediately. So white has to play here which means black gets to take here, and there's another eye when black connects here. So this looks like it's really promising. 
The problem is, is that I still need to move down here to make this, anything on the bottom into an eye. So I just connects calmly. This says, okay, you know what? Obviously, if you don't, if white doesn't respond, whoops. Uh, there's just a net here and black is alive. Black connects. Um, black just gets out a little bit. But then white plays this move to keep everything safe. And this also pokes out the eye. And so at this point, this is game over. Um, I just I, At this point, I, there's only two boards left in the simul. So I just kind of kept playing for a while since he was kind of paying more attention. I play here. Of course, he pops out the other eye. Um, we try this thing. I try linking up to the whole bottom group, <laughs> which you can see is kind of a disaster. After this move, there's no eye down here. And uh, that's it. This, is, this group is dead. Game is over. I resign. So if, however, <laughs> the alternative universe where I can find this move and uh, maybe here, here, here. Maybe this one first. I'm not sure the order. I mean, if if I'm just trying to give white points here. Uh, I'm really just here. End game. I know white needs a move there. Let's seal that off for white. Let's seal that off for black. Let's give black that. Let's let's give white this. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to get the game to a point where the score estimator can know what's going on. Nope. 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 Oh, actually, maybe black needs to move over here anyway. Here, can we make a secchi? No. That's dumb. All right. <laughs> Are you alive now? Do you think you're alive? Uh, nope. Thinks this is score estimator on... Um, well, that was kind of sense anyway. Um, on C Goban is really dumb. It's really dumb. Oh yeah, white would probably get these. All right, anything else to clean up here? Now it's black plus seven. Oh, but it doesn't give my head. Anyway, it's a really close game. I'm, uh, you know, it's it's too hard for me to read out all the way to the end because there are too many good moves that I don't see that a pro would see. Um, there's probably at least seven points in here for white though, I'm assuming. Um, so I make it really close. Of course, all these aren't going to be white because of this move. White, black will just push here. There's pushes here and here. Uh, yeah, it's really close if I just live there. So I could have beaten a pro at two stones. <laughs> I don't know what the moral of the story is. Um, anyway, here are, the, here are the moves. The moves I'm I think that are the most interesting is tanukiing this shape. Like experimenting with that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm um, just seeing how much damage white could actually do to me. And the answer was not that much. Like, like I don't feel punished, even though white feels, like, white feels good. Like, I didn't make my opponent feel bad, but I don't feel punished by tanuking that shoulder hit. And maybe that's, I need to be a little bit stronger to really feel like I know what the value of this worth is worth. Because it's probably worth a lot more than I think it is. <laughs> um, actually, I'm quite sure of it. Because <laughs> if I'm, actually, white wouldn't come down that way right uh i would have to play this way something like this <clears throat> like this yeah like this this feels good for black like this this white's very thin i don't know all right so that's an interesting move tanuking there can't i can't I even give you advice if it was good or not though like i think it was slightly bad but i enjoyed playing it so i'm probably um <laughs> likely to do it again this move i still have very mixed feelings about just doesn't feel right the spacing is so weird. Um, this this is probably my biggest regret getting to experimental here. Just play the normal move. Just play the normal move. I was having a good time. Um, pushing and injuring this stone was probably not good. That's the reason why attaching to this stone was was the correct choice. I don't really need to get into a huge fight right now. I was excited to get in a huge fight inside my area though. Like that was a really cool thing. Uh, yeah. So the favorite move I play the whole game. Actually, I really like that one. That was. <laughs> That's a good move. Um, but is this one? 
right? This is, this is one of those moments where you feel like, yes, I am a go player. I am choosing the correct direction. I am not choosing the bananas. I am choosing, you know, all the leafy green vegetables. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard, hard, harder to swallow, but better for you, right? If you play this direction. And white well, didn't really give me what I wanted here, and I should. This was a little bit of an overplay. I needed to just pull back and take my medicine again. Leafy green vegetables, people. Here, here. Oh, some of you might wonder uh, why isn't this a ladder? Because uh, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> I can get, I can get compensation here, you know, like I can, I can link up essentially to this side of the board. Um, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel like go. Uh, yep. So here, do, 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 pushing through, yep. Peep, making shape, making shapes, making shapes. And then this probably just needs a play move here. Let white take enough points here, then I can take more points here. That'll be a game. Uh, actually, white will probably play this way first. Yeah, if white if white can't attack this, really hard for white to come up with enough points just at the top alone. Like white really needs to attack something to find points. And there's all the thickness in the world for white. And again, yep, this is the move that. Made the game not over, <laughs> which I think was pretty cool. Because my opponent thought he was going to kill me. <laughs> what a nice guy. Yep, and then lastly, oh, if you guys are wondering why it doesn't black wedge here, the reason is because it's bad. <laughs> but it just becomes a straight up uh, like capturing race. Um, but black can't really Atari here because he doesn't have enough liberties so black would have to play from this side. Um, but then white obviously gets two liberties to three. So yeah, I think the wedge was a bad idea. Why black has to submit so um, painfully. And this, again, maybe someone can explain that to me, how this turns into a seki. But it looked good for me. Oh, oh, sadness. Yep, this move, this move, sad move. All right, this is where we're going to end on my sad, saddest move of the game. The cowering and fear shape move. Blech. I could have beat a pro. I could have been done. All right, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> I hope that you, feel, you felt like you played a pro from watching this game review. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>